The year is 2024 and the beauty community that we have all known and love that we all thought was starting to finally unite and come together is in shambles. Hi and welcome to my channel. My name is Emma Elise. I'm a licensed esthetician, beauty expert, and beauty commentator and if you want to talk about it, you've come to the right place. Now we have a couple things on the menu today. It's been a big week, especially in the world of TikTok, but we're going to start with the biggest story of the week. If you are at all a beauty consumer on TikTok, you have seen the Gloria video with the brand Euphoria. Which side of my face is the black face paint or the Euphoria foundation? Euphoria is a makeup brand started by Fiona, the CEO of Euphoria. She showcased her brand on Shark Tank where she talked about her vision for the brand and how she started it, how she never originally wanted to be a makeup brand owner. She has no background in makeup, but she was traveling overseas for work and ended up in really polluted environments that really impacted her skin's health. And she wanted to formulate a makeup line that had skincare in mind. This is not a new concept. A lot of brands are shifting this way with having skincare aspects in their makeup. If you look to even like It Cosmetics, Bare Minerals, Bare Minerals was a big leader in skincare based makeup. But her slogan, I believe, is makeup that you can sleep in. So it's like super, super clean makeup. Back in August, Euphoria dropped their first foundation launch with only 15 shades of foundation. Now, they're an indie brand, and I could understand loosely having 15 shades as your starting point as an indie makeup brand, but the problem was, the problem was the shade range. Because the shade range... No. God, I hope I be saying her name right. Gloria, gorgeous, dark skin, chocolate, TikToker, makeup TikToker, reviewed and was sent this foundation, and baby, it was off, okay? The shade range was not there, Euphoria got dragged, and they went back to the drawing board to expand their shade range. And their first excuse for the lack of shade range is they wanted to see how that foundation did, um... On the market which i'm so tired of brands saying that being like oh we're coming back we're gonna make more shades like no come correct come correct the first time if it doesn't work out it doesn't work out because one thing to these brands need to understand about black women is we spend the most money in the beauty space and this has been a fact for a very very long time excluding us is never a good idea and it really really first showcases at this point we need to see if these brands showcase to us that they don't want us to consume their product we're not consuming your product but what did fiona do she went back to the drawing board she went back to the drawing board and she decided to create more shades which you would think second time around let's come correct come correct she did not come correct Fiona did not. Um, there's a lot of weird stuff going on with this brand from what I've seen on their social media but Fiona and Euphoria decided to launch a foundation, the deepest foundation, foundation number 600. With one sing singular pigment in the foundation, which was black. She released a tar colored foundation and shout out to our whistleblower Gloria who came on TikTok and showed us the comparison of the 600 foundation shade by euphoria and compared it to black face paint why were they the same color this is black face paint this is the darkest shade of the euphoria foundation there's so many things wrong with this first of all from a beauty professional side because i was a makeup artist before i ever was even an esthetician and a skin and a skincare professional but the color black straight just the color black does not work as a mixing medium it does not work as a foundation shade because if you understand color theory we are all a blend of so many different colors and the color black does not work even as a mixing medium because blending anything with the color black usually tends to create a muddy grayish color that would not look good on anyone there were a few influencers that i saw on tiktok that were sent this color 600 and tried to use it I'll obviously pop up pictures here tried to use it and it looked gray it looked ashy it did not look right I'm seeing this and seeing multiple things multiple things being whistleblown from the brand for example the cosmetic chemist that went and read the ingredients list saw that they only used one pigment which was the color black 
I was able to see on their TikTok that Fiona claims that this foundation formula was worth $800, but by the good graces and kindness out of her heart, she decided to to create a formula that was just as good, but only charge people $48 for it. Babe, if you have an $800 quality foundation on your hands that you are giving to the public for only $48 and you're only putting one pigment in there, for your black consumers. I just feel, I feel like, I don't know what I feel like. I feel like these brands are trying to bamboozle people and honestly, I don't see Euphoria surviving this. I truthfully don't. Um, this was just so, I think as black women too, one big thing when these brands do this to us, one thing as black women that I think we need to feel more when brands do this when we find that brands are purposely excluding us and making a mockery out of us i think we need to sit back and breathe this is a blatant um showcase of people not valuing us um it's demeaning and um i <laughs> i understand this is a small indie brand this is a small business but this was genuinely foul um and i don't see euphoria coming back after this it's been days since this was posted and there has been no apology yet um i definitely can see this becoming a pr nightmare so for all my gals in pr um what would you do <laughs> how would you help save them because i they will never be catching a dollar from me or a follow or a promo or nothing okay done moving right along if you are on lash talk or if you are a lash extension girl you used to do lashes you get lashes you do diy clusters and you're on tiktok um there was some discourse the service industry world has become really um interesting over the last couple of years with the increase of diy um definitely from covid um the insane economy and inflation that we're all dealing with in the us of a's that has impacted everybody's pockets okay going to the grocery store just for a few items is a 200 dollar trip so if you think i can afford getting 200 dollar lashes uh-uh lash checks have been coming online well honestly providers all across the board but primarily lash um lash techs hairstylists um, have been coming online and really speaking about how they're concerned that they're going to have to go back to their nine to five because business is not businessing. And there is a couple um, of reasons why I can see the side from the provider side, side as an esthetician and I can also understand the consumer side. We're going to go at this a couple different ways. We're going to start from the service provider side of the issue of why service providers are having a hard time um, making money in today's day and age, okay? First of all, something that is so important as a service provider to understand from service provider to service provider and something I have learned um, in the aesthetic industry from people I have taken courses from is when the economy is struggling, you need to be able to examine your business examine your product and figure out how you can meet the demands of what people need so let me give you an example i just took i just finished a laser certification and my instructor had been has been in the skincare industry as a provider for 20 plus years she was talking about her experience during 2008 when the economy was horrendous okay and she was saying it was really hard times and I had to 100% adjust my prices and my services because my clients could not afford to come see me. And if my clients can't afford to come see me, then I can't make money. And she was saying how important it was for her colleagues to also do the same, to evaluate their prices, to evaluate um, their client base and what they need from them so their business can stay afloat and not only for their business to stay afloat but for them to create long-term client relationships there she was saying 
she was saying how appreciative her clients were for her lowering her prices so that they could still afford to come in and get those services relax and feel their best that is such an important business practice that I don't see from providers today and I here's the thing as provider to provider I understand you wanting to make a buck you wanting to maintain your lifestyle and stay in business I totally understand that but to be a long-term business owner this is this is like business 101 you have to be able to evaluate the economy and what's going on I also want to say this from the provider perspective especially for newbies in the beauty industry I feel like social media has MLM'd the beauty industry. I think that people have gaslit a lot of women into getting into doing lashes, into getting into doing quick beauty services, taking these super expensive courses, flashing and showcasing this crazy lifestyle that honestly most service providers and there's a lot of service providers that I know that have great amazing clientele they don't live that life it is not you cannot come into this industry and think that you are going to bamboozle your clients because people are smart and it takes a lot of passion and education to stay in the industry now i want to come at it from the client perspective i've been a client of many things and there's definitely a frustration on the client side because people have insane rules and regulations people have insane prices but one thing i need clients to understand is that diy lash clusters are not the same as lash extensions excuse me they are not the same i do not care what lash glue diy lash glue you were using at home they are not the same and i understand because i do wear DIY lash clusters especially when I have like events or if it's like a quick little getaway vacation throw on a little DIY lash cluster but there is nothing like going in somewhere and getting a service and so one thing that I have started to do as a client of many different types of services is I'm not going to Instagram people anymore if you are a flashy Instagram girl I'm turned off I'm not coming I'm not coming if you're showing if you're showing your BMW on your business page I'm not I'm not coming if you're showing your penthouse apartment on your business page I'm not coming if you have an insanely long list of rules and regulations I'm not coming if you require a an insane deposit I'm not coming I just got my braids done I paid $250 with the hair included okay I'm not paying nobody $500 to do some braids listen I'm just not so it is so important that people start vetting their providers and that actually want to provide a quality experience you just have to do the research you have to get in there and actually vet your stylist ask questions if somebody is not messaging you back emailing you back texting you back don't go there turn your card off okay if you're sitting out front for an hour and a half and you're feeling anxious that it's not going to be a good service it's probably not okay turn the card off go home okay and I'm saying this even as somebody who provides a service okay if the professionalism isn't there if you feel if your gut instinct is telling you no it's time to go okay moving into the last topic that I want to discuss today veneer ticks there's so much I want to say on the on the on the front of the veneer tech uh, obviously as we know logically going to a veneer tech is unsafe probably unsanitary it's illegal um and no one should be allowing somebody who is not a licensed doctor to mess with their mouth our teeth are linked to so many different things um your teeth are directly linked to your heart health as well so putting a veneer over rotting teeth is crazy um, and it doesn't take rocket science to figure that out but I want to talk about it from the perspective of beauty 
standard of the lack of access that people have to dental health um especially in the black community i i think it's very telling that primarily uh black people are providing these services and also black people are getting these services oh hey girl it all comes down to the lack of access that primarily people of color have to dental services. Dental work is extremely expensive um, and it's not covered often in health insurance, um, which is a problem in our country and a problem within our healthcare system. Um, it also comes down to the fact of it comes down to the fact of vanity um, and how dental care and how our teeth look can be a direct reflection of your socioeconomic standing. Okay, let's be real about it. It's, it is, there's so much deep nuance into why this is, this service is primarily provided by um, black people, but also given to primarily black people. It blatantly showcases the healthcare disparities that black people are still facing in America um, and it needs to be a bigger conversation than oh these veneer tricks these veneer tricks are bad obviously they're bad but what's really bad is our healthcare system what's really bad is that people are so desperate to showcase a lifestyle um, that really isn't real that is really um, destroying people's health destroying people's livelihood um, and as ha ha he he as it is that people are um, I don't want to say people are dumb enough, but it, it's just like people are are so people are desperate enough to really risk their health, their teeth health, um, into getting four thousand dollar veneers is extremely problematic. Um, and I don't love the way the internet is covering this. Um, and it's it's really really sad i've always loved the beauty industry because of its capabilities in just inspiring people making people feel better something i love as an esthetician is being able to brighten somebody's day um by providing them a service but right now I feel like we are in some dark, dark ages. Anyways, y'all, that is it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Please discourse in the comments below. I love reading your guys' comments. And as always, make sure you guys are subscribed. And I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.